don't know how to handle finances, Lord. We ask you to show us, give us wisdom, Lord, to do what you have given us, Lord, to do the right thing, Lord. Lord, you took two fish and a few loaves, Lord, and you fed 5,000, Lord. So truly, Lord, we know that you can take what you have given us, Lord, and feed us, and it'll be more than enough. Then, Lord, we ask you to pray for those who are, are sick, Lord, who, are, who cannot be here today for whatever reason it may be, Lord. But there, there are those who are in hospital, Lord, or just on their beds that they, they want to be here, Lord. They want to stand. They want to serve, but they can't, Lord. So we ask you to send your, your anointing power to heal their bodies, Lord, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Lord. Lord, we ask you to go and, and visit those who are in prison, Lord. Let them know just because they're behind bars does not mean that you're still not able to do all things, Lord. Lord, then we ask you to pray for our young ones, young people, Lord, those who are in school and college. Lord, we know that they're getting ready to have their exams. Sharpen their minds, Lord. Help them to study, Lord. They must study, Lord, to pass the exams. Lord, just give them the understanding that you have to study. But, Lord, we still ask that you anoint our brains, Lord, anoint our minds, Lord, when they take that test, they won't make a B, they'll make an A, Lord. Then we pray for our seniors, Lord. Pray for our seniors, Lord, that they're not able to do the things that they used to do, Lord. Some may be just lonely. We pray for lonesome, Lord. Whatever the situation may be, Father, we give it all to you because we know you have all power. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish and nothing that you cannot do. So we go to the source, Jesus Christ. Then, Father, we just want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for going to that cross and dying for each one of us, Lord. Yes, yes. Because of what you did on the cross, your blood that was shed for each and every one of us, Lord, that one day we will be with you in glory. Again, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I Go sing I feel I feel like going and on I feel like going on double try I just want to say hello again to everyone and thank Minister Stokes for that prayer and our musician for that, those selections. And we apologize for those who are streaming with us for um, technical difficulties. We're trying to resolve them. 
uh, but we're going to move on. Before I go forward and read the scripture, my heart and prayers go out to the families up in Buffalo, New York, um, and all in the area who was impacted by the mass shooting yesterday, mm. as well as those who are in other parts of the country um, who have succumbed to racial violence that it seems to be a natural occurrence in this United States of America. I just want to ensure everyone that we still serve a God who is able to do all things but fail. Amen. Oh, but the reality is that we must be always vigilant on our guards. I said time and time again that we cannot procrastinate. We cannot let down our guards. We cannot move from where we are to where we want to be without God on our side. If our young people do not get it twisted, Always be mindful of your surroundings. Never wander off by yourself. Um, there's dear high propensity of little brown boys and little brown girls disappear. And even within the church of the African American church, we still are a target for the extreme violence because we worship a God that has been able to sustain us in spite of what this world tried to do to us. So my heart goes out to the families I pray for even the one who committed the violent act and that God would rest his soul and would change his mind and let him realize that there is a better way. I pray for the first responders as well as lift up those who have to deal with this ongoing crisis. And I pray for you, my brother and sister in Christ, that you do not get complacent just because you are here today does not promise you'll be here tomorrow. So when we say this is a day that the Lord has made <laughs> and we should be glad in it, it sure carries some type of meaning. And it's interesting and appropriate and not even knowing that the event we carried yesterday, it, it just gave me an unresolved and even I want to say a happy but a sad confirmation of my sermon today. So Matthew chapter 10, I'm lifting up verses 16 to 22. So the gospel according to Matthew, you'll find these words out in the international version. Beginning with verse 16. Behold, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. Be aware of men, for they will deceive you over courts and flog you in their synagogue. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them in the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you would speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it's not you who speaks, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brothers will deliver brothers over to death. The father, his child, the child will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So after selection from my musician, I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, endure. Endure. Well, I woke up early this morning. My heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for, for opening up these eyes of mine. 
Then I went over to my window, and while looking through the shade, once again I had to tell him, thank you, Lord, but let me see another day. Now the sun was brightly shining, the wind was blowing not too strong, and the tree house just a few feet way was a robin singing his song i don't know what he was singing pretty soon he was on his way who can say he wasn't being grateful and saying thank you for another day everybody ought to praise his name be thankful and can do it too. Now the sun was brightly shining. The wind was blowing not too strong. In the tree house just a few feet away was a robin singing his song. I don't know what he was singing. Pretty soon Consummate me now to this appointed time. Use, Lord, for thy glory. Hide me behind thy sacred cross. God, we ask you now to reach deep into your storehouse, Lord, and pour out a blessing that makes teaching easy. God, we lift up those who understand my voice who might be sick. We ask you now, God, to heal them by your power and by your might. God, we ask you now to lead and guide me so that I may speak to your people and we bring a soothing word, God, or relief of hope, of faith, encouragement, Father God, as we endure this season of trials and tribulation. Bread of heaven, sweet bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. For it's in the presence and all of God's children said together, Amen. There are many races we must run in life, and there are some we choose to run, and others we are forced to run. There have been told many stories about runners overcoming a fall that resulted in a major injury or pain that they sustained, but yet they crawl, they limped, and they struggle to cross that finish line to endure and finish the race that they had started. We've seen tears shed while watching movies of our main character, whether it's a Marvel character or a superhero character, who seems to be at his end. Death is intimate, but somehow they muster up something deep inside that allows them to endure, to defeat the enemy, and be everybody's heroes, no matter what obstacles came their way. Yes, we cheered at those heroes each and every time at the end of the movie. We cheered at sporting events when folks that we are pulling for run 
and endure to finish the race. But my brothers and sisters, the race that we typically run is not a marathon that lasts only for two or three hours. It is a marathon that fortunately and sometimes unfortunately, we have to run every day of our lives. Some of us started out real fast as sprinters in life, and we even had some partners that we can hand a baton off that would help us with the relay. But over the course of time, we find out that even our best of besties don't have the endurance that we have. We start off in a crowd, but now we find ourselves alone. The crowd has left us, particularly when the cheering stops. When there's no more medals or ribbons to be given at the end of the race, you'll notice that people will leave you in a heartbeat when there's nothing in it for them when you finish your run. This thing of endurance has been plaguing us since we have been called Christians in our life. It lets us know that no matter what your faith is, no matter what your poise or position is in this world, no matter what you have gained yesterday or gained this morning, doesn't matter your educational attainment, doesn't matter how dark or how gray your hair is, you still have to run the race. Race is part of your DNA. Race is part of your life. Some of us try to sit down and out running, but guess what? You're still in the race. You might be chilling on your couch. You might have put your lazy boy in reclining mode. You might have put on your best channel, but life still moves whether you're moving with it or not. You can be sitting down idle, procrastinating, and think you have moved into a season of retirement, but guess what? Your body cells continue to run its course until it doesn't want to run anymore. It continues to deteriorate. Your heart continues to beat. Your lungs continue to run. You can either help it by maintaining it and enduring, or you can sit on the sideline and watch life pass you by. It reminds me of that old story we tell our kids, right, about the tortoise in the hare, right? The tortoise, he all fast, all of a sudden he gets too tired and take a nap. But the tortoise keep on pushing and keep on pushing and keep on pushing and finish the course. Endurance to the end requires faithfulness to the end. It is as Paul Case, he told Timmy, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course and I kept the faith. Obviously, that is not an easy task, is it not? It's not easy to keep it running when things come up against you. It's not easy to put one foot in front of the other. It's not easy to wake up every day knowing that the winds of life is blowing against you. It's not easy to wake up and try to be the best you can and, and do the best you, what you got and dot every I and cross every T when everybody is hanging on your shoulder, bringing you down and trying to fatigue you out. It's not easy to endure. I heard folks say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, but sometimes I get tired. Uh, I get tired of trying to smile all the time. I get tired of trying to endure the pain and suffering and affliction of the world. I get tired of trying to always be churchy. <laughs> but we have to continue to hold on, not to my strength, but the strength that God gives me, the strength that comes when I'm completely weak and tired and frustrated. I don't want to move, but it's, that's when God shows up, and I give him glory and praise, because if he did not show up during those times, I, I might have been the one who might have went suicidal. I might have been the one who might have cut somebody out. I might have been the one who might have lost my mind. But thanks be to God that he allows me, as Paul reminded Timothy, that he continues to have to fight and finish his course because of this faith. This is not easy task, and it is, it is intended to be difficult, challenging, and ultimately refining us as we prepare to return to life with our Father in heaven to receive their eternal blessing. And I know we didn't want to hear that this morning and said that it is supposed to be. <laughs> it was easy then everybody be able to do it. I like when folks say they can get out at any time, and when they was athletes or they ran a track in high school or they played ball in college, 
We have a mindset to think that no matter how old we get, Brother Grady, we can wake up that morning and go and run that race and pick up that ball, but the devil is a liar. <laughs> Your body will let you know real quick. You get in that start block and say, ready, set, and everybody else is gone. You're still trying to get up because your back can start cramping. Sometimes the mind might be willing, but the body <laughs> it ain't going to let you do it. It's not going to let you do it because it's designed to deteriorate because this vessel that we're in will decay. From dust we came and from dust we will go back. But I like this thing that Paul lets us, and even a Hebrew writer reminds us and encourages us this way. He says, therefore, since we all are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely to us, and let us run with, listen, with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the finder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despite, despite the shame in sitting at the right hand of God. The main thrust and truth of our message today is that we would stand strong and must stand strong. We face persecution when we stand with Jesus on our side. And I know you want a sugar coat message that says that there's no persecution today and there's no trials and tribulation today. There's no racism. We're in a post-racial world. We can go to church and not worry about somebody walking in with a gun doing Bible study. We can walk down the street and not get pulled over because you're brown. You want me to say that, but I can't do that and lie in church. We must realize that the devil has a plan. He has a method and his primary purpose is to make you tired and fatigue so you'll stop running. I was minded when I ran track in high school, and folks used to tease us because we ran on dirt. We ran on grass. We was a poor school. We couldn't afford to have that paved track field. We couldn't afford to have somebody come in and cut lines in the grass. We usually had to go out there with the chalk, and some of us had to go get white paint <laughs> to paint our fields. But we came to the big town of Raleigh. We had somebody sponsor us to give us some shorts. I ain't know what athletic shorts was. I just ran and cut off jeans. But because we ran on rocks and grass, when our little feet hit those little smooth pavements, it's like we had feathers on our ankles. And reminded me that it doesn't matter where you come from. <laughs> it's matter what's inside you. If you believe that you can finish, then you will finish. But the point I wanted to raise is that when we got there, there were so many people who were just teasing us and just ridiculing us because of how we were dressed. We didn't have on logos with our school name on it. We didn't have, I don't even know what they call them back then, tracks, shoes, little spikes in it. We just had tennis shoes. <laughs> we could have listened to all the chatter in the stands. But our coach told us one thing. If they ain't running beside you, then don't pay no attention to them. <laughs> and I just want to bring you close for a moment. If you're running your race for God and you're running the life that God has given you, if the person ain't running with you, then don't pay no attention to them. <laughs> oh, some of y'all might be sitting beside them, and I understand they might be in your house, but I'm here to tell you that if God has put you to the task, then God has given you everything you need to complete the task. Your haters are posed to try to convince you that you don't have the talent to finish. You don't have the skills to finish. Matter of fact, you don't have the time to finish. But God has placed before you, he has ordered your step. He has put a light unto your path so that you may finish the race and the course that he has given you. And how do I know? Because he lets us know that Jesus is concerned with our endurance. And he knows that we are going through times of hardship and times of trials. And that's why he sees all and he knows all. 
He knows that we're going to be lost sometimes. He knows that we're going to be persecuted sometimes. He knows when our storms come, before they come. He knows when we're going to fall so he can pick us up. You don't have to worry about what God is going to do. You just do what God told you to do, and God will take care of the rest. It's hard in continuing this reality that we face to be a disciple and avoid to be persecuted by this world. My brothers and sisters, you and I must learn, as Matthew has recorded the resounding words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He shapes it and he weaves it as if it was a proverb that we should fear and whom we should not fear. He lets us know that we should have a reverence of fear for him and submit ourselves to him in all our ways and all our understanding. But we should not fear anything against the world or what the world might want us to fear from it. For God has said he is our protection. He is our hedge of protection. He is our battle axe. He is our bow and arrow. He has made a way that no one can touch us without his permission. Now, if you've been touched, then just realize that God allows somebody in your inner circle or maybe you open up the door. The Lord explains to us that we have learned that we should have appropriate fear, but this fear in him will allow him to strengthen us when we're weak. So many Christians' life have been marked by endurance. We know that we are supposed to be running against this thing for life and for our faith, but we spend so much time running against each other. We're so much in tune to competing with other people's races and not running the race that we have been charged to run. It's interesting to me how we can know more about some, what somebody else is doing, what's going on in somebody else's house. But somebody asks you about your own house, in your own life, I don't know. We know what happens in everybody else's stuff. And our stuff is just tore up. Why? We're too busy watching other people run. You can't watch somebody run and run straight. <laughs> so if you never ran track, you don't understand that. So. If you're running and you're looking at somebody else, you can't be looking at where you're going. The only time you look at what you're going is when the person is in front of you. <laughs> and that means that you've been left behind. All right, I'm going to leave that alone because y'all like, okay, Pastor, you're going too deep for me now. Running a race looks the same as serving Christ. You can't serve Christ in transactional terms. You can't run a race transactional. Because if you move one thing, you got to move another thing. You can't run just by moving one leg. You got to move the other leg. Unless you have lost one leg and you are amputee and you have learned how to hop but you only can go so fast. Even if you only have one leg, you still must use your arms to propel you and give you balance. And if you got a big head like me, you got to learn how to balance that head. If I lean it too far front, you're going to fall over. If I lean it too far to the back, you're going to stumble. You got to run with balance if you run a race. The same thing with your faith. You just can't run on a one-legged Bible study. You can't just run using your arms because you heard one good solo or one good sermon. And you can't run with your big head. Y'all catch that when you get home. If you want to have endurance, you must learn to evade the tendency 
to listen to distractions. If you want to have endurance, you can't listen to what I call gym rats. Anybody been to the gym lately or ever been to the gym and you know that you got um, folks in there who are always in the gym? Um, They're always going to put the heaviest weight on the bar. They're always going to take the best equipment. And they always got the biggest bottle of water and towels. But they don't look like they've ever been in a gym. They don't. They have no muscles. Don't have any tone. Don't even know how to do a curl. But the moment you go and get on some piece of equipment and try to lift up something, it's the moment they're going to give you advice of how to use that piece of equipment. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The same thing happens with you as a disciple of God. You've been running your race. And you're running the race that God has given you. And somebody who's not even at your caliber, at your level, want to pull you to the side and give you techniques while sitting down on how to run a race. You must learn to evade your obstacles, all right? The second thing I want to share with you is that when you're going for endurance, you must remember that it requires the Savior's redemption power. One thing that we fail to do each and every time is that you try to run without any power. How many of y'all got up this morning and eat breakfast? Feel a little sleepy right now, don't you? Or how many over ate this morning? Feel a little sleepy right now, don't you? It's a balance of spiritual power to allow you to perform the race that you're in. If you don't get enough substance, you might eat what we call like carbs, sugar, and you shoot right on out there. But then all of a sudden, what happens? A lot of us come to Sunday service to get sugar. We get filled up on the emotionalism of the word. Run out Sunday. And Monday morning, we just spiritually, what? Dead. But the redemption power of the Holy Spirit will allow us to hold on to the substance that we can endure until the end. And that requires you having the Holy Spirit in you. Paul lets us know you can have a lot of other stuff in you but it's not going to take it to the end. It's not going to allow you to survive a mass shooting when your loved one doesn't come back home. It's not going to allow you to survive when you get laid off. It's not going to allow you to survive when sickness shows up in your house, death shows up in your house. The only thing that will allow you to endure those types of obstacles is the power of God. Now, here's our responsibility, and I'm going to get out your way, is that when you run, it says not to run against your fellow Christian brothers and sisters, but it says to run with. We all have seen maybe news clippings or video clippings of I think this marathon runner, can't believe what Olympics it was, was leading the pack, came around, had a bad fall, couldn't get up. One of the person who was behind ended up stopping, running back, and helping them finish the, the, the finish line. We've seen it many times again. The Lord was intentional 
when he says where two or three are gathered, I'll be in the midst. We sometimes conclude that to only mean in prayer, but it also means in running the race. Because we are all part, uh, listen, of one what? Body. So if we are all running together towards the kingdom, when one falls, we should do what? Help them finish the race. But if you're not competing against them, then you should have compassion to help them finish. Now, let me clarify. I'm not talking about some lazy, procrastinating person who don't do nothing. Yeah, I said it. I'm talking about someone who has made an effort to put their best foot forward to run. That's the difference. If you are trying to live a godly life, then God will make sure he gives you some help. Christ has already won the race. Because Christ has won the race, then you and I can endure until the end. This text lets us know that this race is not going to be easy because endurance requires constant training. I don't like training all the time. I don't like it at work. I ain't like it when I play sports. I don't like to have to be training over and over and over again until I need it. And once I need it, I'm thankful for the training that I have. And the same thing goes with you and I in our faith. You must study to show yourself approved so that you can rightfully divide the word of God and the truth. And so that you may be able to endure. Because let's be honest, right now, because our father or our mother have turned against us, some of us have quit the race. Because our children have turned against us, some of us have dropped out of the race. Because God has appeared to allow storms in your life, sickness in your life, some of us have quit the race. And even this morning, some of us decided that life is too hard to go on. I just am tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired. You look back over your life and ask this question that most of us have been thinking. Lord, why so much pain? Why so many trials and why so much death? I'm trying to do the best I can with what I got to endure. And you know what God's answer is? Anybody want to know? Keep running. Keep running. I, I know you want to hear that. I know you're tired, but keep running. I know you want to quit, but keep running. I know you want to punch everybody out on your job. Keep going to work. Keep getting that money until God opened up another door. <laughs> I know that your family has got on your last nerve. Keep loving them in the name of Jesus and keep running. I know that it seems like the world has lost its mind, but keep running. You can endure. Why? Because the God we serve loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. So who said believed in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. What if Jesus did not endure the 24 hours of beating that he took? What did he not endure to climb up the rocky hill to Calvary's hilltop? What if he did not endure being stretched wide and lift high and bled on Calvary for you and I? What if he did not endure the night laying in a bar tomb? 
What if he did not endure the grave or death? But thanks be to God that he did endure because God raised him up from the dead. And because he got up, guess what? You and I can get up out of our bed each and every day with our head held high and our shoulders wear back. And we can face what life may bring. We can face what tomorrow may bring. If God be for us, then he's more than the world against us. You got to endure. And guess what? You don't have to do anything but trust God. Don't trust your body because your body will fail you. <laughs> trust God. The Bible says, if this body fades away, still you have a place in eternity with God. Will it be easy? No. Can you make it? Yes. Because when you look back over your life right now, there should be about three or four shouts because what the Lord has done for you, because the enemy should have killed you last year. And that sickness should have took you out last year. That heartbreak should have took you out. But God allowed you to endure. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We praise your holy name. Father, in this season in which the trials of life are hard, there is trouble on our left and on our right, and we are witnessing some of the things that we have not seen God in 50 years or even in our own lifetime. But Lord, we're not immune from anything, but we know that we are covered and protected by you. It was you, Father God, that allowed death to skip us this week. It was you, Lord, who breathed into us these bodies, God, first life and first mercy. It was you, God, that redirected a bullet that was meant for me, God. It was you, Lord, that allowed me to run the red light without running into another car. It was you, Father God. Allow me to walk into the job that my resume didn't qualify me for was you, Father God. That allow my child or my wayward son, my wayward daughter, Lord, to be able to kick the habit of cocaine or be able to walk away from the addiction, God. It was you, Father. In spite of our disobedience, in spite of our own recklessness, God, that it was you, Father, that allowed us to be able to endure, that we may walk into the sanctuary, God, or participate live stream, God, and say, if it had not been for you, Lord, if it had not been for your saving grace, God, to had not been for your power, God, that allowed me to keep my sanity, God, when life through its best punch, Lord. It was you, God, that allowed me in, to endure the treatments, God, for the cancer, God, to endure the chemo, God, the dialysis, God. It was you, Father God, that allowed me to endure the loss of my, my boo, God. It was you, God, that allowed me to be able to go on in life, God, and keep their memory close to my heart, God, so that I may continue to live, God. It was you, Father God, that allow all of us, God, to see a day that we have never seen before, Lord. And it's going to be you, God that's going to keep us from and present us, God, faultless before the Father, God. It's going to be you, Father God, that will allow us to endure, that we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God, and get to the other side, God. It will be you, Father, who will give us the strength, God, that will be made perfect, God, during the time of our weakness. It will be you, Lord. My God, I pray for anyone under the sound of my voice who do not know you as Lord and Savior, that you now, God, Move by your spirit. Allow them, God, to be able to give their life to you, God, and cast all their cares upon you, Lord, so they may find relief, God, and find safety, God, in the shelter that you have provided, Lord. God, I pray for everyone, God. I pray for our community, God. I pray for our country, this nation, Lord. God, I pray that you keep our minds on you. 
I pray, God, for our children, Lord, that you keep them from danger seen and danger unseen. I pray for our churches, Lord. They continue to be the beacon, the light that draws the lost to them, God, that they continue, God, to usher in your spirit. I pray, God, that in spite of what the enemy does, in spite of what the world may say about us, we know that we know that we know that we know that we are yours and you are our Father. And you prepared a place for us in heaven and you're coming back for us, God. Now, God, allow the grace, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in each one of us henceforth now and forevermore. And people, God, say amen, amen, and amen. You can endure. God bless you, and have a blessed week.